Hello, and welcome to this week's Canyons U Bite Size PD. Our topic today is elementary social studies standards. Now what? Diving into elementary social studies resources. So I am Ashley Lennox. I am a teacher specialist here in the Instructional Supports Department. My two content areas of focus are elementary mathematics and elementary social studies. I also support on a number of our systems teams. And so one of those in particular is informational literacy, all things fifth grade. And more than anything, I want you to know that I want you to leave here knowing that I'm happy to help you with anything that you need for your classroom. If it's not a question that I can answer, I'll make sure that we get you in the right direction and put you in touch with the person that can support you. So I'm going to put my email address both at the beginning of this presentation and at the end so that we have access to it at both places. As you're going through this, if anything comes up and you have any questions or feedback or concerns, I hope that you don't hesitate to reach out to me. Next, we have our professional development norms developed with CSD. And really what I hope that you'll take from this is take what you need. Um, I know that you're here because this is a topic that interests you and is important to you in your classroom right now. So I hope that you can come in, get what you need from this and get out um, because I know that you're taking time away from other things that you could be doing to listen to this. Moving into our learning intentions and success criteria, we have two learning intentions today that I am going to invite you to kind of engage with. The first is to have an understanding of how content integration is defined by the Utah State Board of Education and how this impacts our elementary social studies instruction. I also invite you to identify what resources are available to support social studies instruction by Canyon School District and the Utah State Board of Education. And would, when you leave, you'll know that you are successful with those learning intentions when you can identify the resources that are available to you, where you can access those resources as well as additional supports to successfully implement the newly approved social studies standards for the fall of 2024, the 24-25 school year. So I don't know about you all, but that 2024-2025 seems to be sneaking up fairly quickly. Um, I know sometimes in February, it feels like it's taking us a long time to get there, but um, it kind of seems like things are moving into hyperspeed for myself. So our agenda or kind of my to-do list for today is as follows, is that we're going to go through and review that social studies standards adoption process to kind of get a shared understanding of where we've been to get to where we are now. The Utah State Board of Education definition of content integration, and we'll jump into kind of some basic examples of what that can look like in your classroom identify supports available for social studies instruction, and then both Canyon School District and the Utah State Board of Education is developing opportunities for teachers to access more almost weekly at this point. So I'm going to give you what what's available right now at time of publication. I guarantee that by the time you're watching this, there might be something new that's been added to this. So I'm going to invite you to look for those weekly emails from your district specialists and your grade level specialists, pardon me, uh, to see where those opportunities are arising. So the social studies adoption process is as follows. So um, just to give you a little bit of history with this, because it is social studies, the original social studies standards that we have been using up until recently were initially approved for for implementation in 2005. So that, that's been quite a while ago um, until this point. So the standards were long overdue for that overhaul. I mean, when we think of just what's happened worldwide since 2005, We've had a lot of, um, of things have come and gone literally since then. So this process was the, the standards that we're using now were officially approved in December of 2022 with the goal of full implementation of those standards for K-6 in the 2024-2025 school year. During that standards adoption process, they had record-breaking public comment. And what the, the standards that you have in front of you now is a result of those comments to try to make sure that voices were heard within the standards that we are going to be putting in front of students starting this fall. 
Canyon School District made those standards available to you through the instructional guides starting in that 22-23 school year. So what we did is we mapped the draft social studies standards to wonders. And so we had those draft standards available to you. And then for the 23-24, we offered you the full adopted standards. And then now for this fall, we're going to be looking for that implementation of those standards. And the goal for that was really to honor you and the work that you do and everything else that we have coming down in elementary. So we knew that with the new ELA curriculum adoption through Wonders and 95%, that was going to be a heavy lift for you all in the classroom. So this was an opportunity to have them available that you could engage with as, as you saw fit, as you saw a place, and kind of learn at your own pace without it kind of being this rushed, hurried, all right, now you have to learn all of these new standards as well. So that was our goal. Hopefully that is something that you have been able to access in the past and um, you've heard about through district day, through your coach, principal, or a specialist here. Moving into this idea of content integration, I, I put this little meme on the right hand side because I think that it is a term that we have seen a lot of versions of. So our goal today is have a shared definition of that. So. Oftentimes what I see is that content integration and what I used as a teacher was that content integration was a place on my master schedule. It didn't always mean that it was used as it was intended. It kind of became a catch-all where anything that I needed to get done was done during that content integration time. So I, I'm going to offer a pause point after I read this definition for you to reflect on what content integration, what the potential is for that within your classroom. So content integration is an approach to teaching in which learning experiences are intentionally designed for students to construct and demonstrate understanding in more than one discipline in which honors the nature of the contents and builds upon those connections. So I want to offer you an opportunity to pause just for a moment here, reflect how have you used content integration in the past and are there opportunities that you could use to deepen student understanding through content integration. Just go ahead and unpause whenever you're ready. So here we have how the state is defining through research what those different opportunities for content integration can, can look like. So they've identified them as this idea of fractured, stealthy, and healthy. And I, I would argue that each of these has a place within our classrooms, especially in the elementary school setting. There is a place for each one of these, and it just kind of depends on what your end goal is for the standards in which you want students being able to demonstrate. So the first idea here is this idea of multidisciplinary content integration. So organized around a theme, disciplines work independently of each other. So an example of that might be something like in second grade, we are learning about oceans. And um, in our wonders story, the main character is taking a trip to the Pacific Ocean, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quick pull up a map pull up where the Pacific Ocean is on my globe, on my Google Maps, or whatever media you're using in order to demonstrate that. And then we kind of move on. So we have our ELA standard, which is over here. We have our social studies standard, which is over here. And they're kind of shouting at each other across the playground, all right? The next one is this idea of interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary skills and concepts are embedded into a discipline and used in the service of a discipline. So an example of that could look like something um, in a math standard, students have to be able to use data in order to solve a mathematical equation. So the data table might be something like distances from one place to another, or it could be something like scientific terms with different weights associated with those. So the students don't necessarily have to have a strong understanding of what the information is in the data table to answer that question around mathematics, but they are kind of starting to work together to an extent. And then the last one here is this idea of transdisciplinary. So it's problem or project based in a real life context with all disciplines working equally together to support student sense making. So you're going to see a couple of examples of what that can look like on the following slides. But really what it looks like is that these standards are all working together to solve one larger problem, okay, or one larger student piece of sense making is the terminology that they're using here. So let's talk about a couple of examples of that. 
And I am going to give you the slide deck with all of these content integration examples for your grade level in this presentation. So don't feel like you need to screenshot this or write this down or anything like that. I will give all of this to you. All right, so here's a second grade example. So the social studies standard is that students will describe how location, climate, and physical features affect where people live and work and how communities modify the environment to meet their needs over time. And then they have some examples there. The science standard or the seed standard is to obtain, evaluate, and communicate information about patterns of living things in different habitats. So we can see right here that the patterns of living things, including humans in different habitats, those two can now work together. And then we can layer that on even further, where in ELA second grade, students are asking and answering questions such as who, what, where, when, why, and how to demonstrate understanding of key details in a text. So why did the characters move from one place to another? Um, what were they doing in order to make that move? Where did they go, et cetera, et cetera. Describe the connection between a series of historical events, scientific ideas or concepts or steps in the technical procedures in a text. So this could be something where students start to um, understand the idea that the pioneers move from one section of the United States to another section of the United States. And then last, participate in shared research and writing projects on a topic. So this could be something where the teacher is offering different primary source documents about why one group of people moved from one place to another. And then as a class, we're going to do a shared write or a shared pen approach to write about that. So this was one project, if you will, that covered all three of these content areas. Now here's a fifth grade example. So in fifth grade social studies, students are asked to investigate how constitutional amendments are passed and provide examples of how amendments to the constitution have extended rights to groups originally de denied protection under the constitution. One note really quick, and this applies to the other one as well, where it says, for example, that does not mean that you need to do all of these different subcategories. This is where the idea of pathways really comes into play, where looking at our ELA standards, there's one group that we might really want to highlight um, under here that that does a lot to extend what that ELA standard is as well. All right. So anytime you see that, for example, those are kind of like a menu of options that you can use. All right, so then we go into the ELA standard. So this is a writing standard where students will conduct short research projects to craft an argument and answer a question. So it could be something like, how was this constitutional amendment passed? Um, or how did the amendment extend rights to, uh, to this group in the Constitution? And then we have those three subcategories there as well. So again, when time becomes the biggest factor in an elementary teacher's day, Content integration is a way that we can really extend that understanding for students and streamline the amount of time that we need to do it. So where do we find resources? There are resources everywhere, and sometimes it's really difficult to be a, a careful consumer of some of these resources. So the first place that I invite you to look is quite simply in your instructional guide. So in your instructional guide, and there's a link to the main bookshelf there, we have already mapped the resources to Wonders and the previous resources from USBE. So I'm gonna share a crosswalk with you in a little while where USBE has taken what the new standards are and what the old standards are and where that crossover is. So we went through and we took any resources that would still apply to those newly updated standards and put those in the instructional guides for you just in case they ever disappeared or went anywhere else. So that's the first place is the instructional guide. So how can I, during my ELA, block of time, extend some of that social studies understanding or knowing what they're going to be asked to do in ELA, how can we use, how can we kind of pick the correct resources to use in that social studies or content integration time? The next link on here, I'm going to go ahead and click on. This is the professional learning menu. This has, was put together by our state social studies elementary person. She's wonderful. Her email is right here. Her name is Joanna Sorensen. So her email is there. And what she's done is she's put together kind of a document that outlines all of the different resources that she can offer to you. So I've gone out and done a couple of these with her. So I'm happy to do it as well. But I wanted to give this to you as kind of a starting place because 
sometimes it's hard to know what to ask for when we're, we're stuck, right? So some of the options is you can do this as a PLC. If your grade level team wants to get together and really chew on some of these things or ask some questions, that's one place that you could do it. If you want to do this individually, if you're the only teacher on your team that's teaching social studies because of departmentalization or dual language immersion or anything like that, we are happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one as well. But some of the options on here that are, are really exciting are things like the disciplinary literacy in elementary social studies. So how can we identify the literacies in those grade level standards and where can we be more intentional in that implementation of those? The other one is this last one right here. I'm really excited about this one. I think that this is such a powerful way to teach social studies to our students, and that's with primary sources. Primary sources are written throughout these standards, starting in kindergarten all the way up to grade six. And then we know that it goes beyond that in those deeper levels of social studies instruction. But oftentimes, those primary sources are, are not written for elementary students, right? It's difficult to have a primary source document that's written in a way that a kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade student can read and access. So this training that she's able to offer for you is showing you how to use the primary sources as well as make them accessible. Okay, so there's lots of different options on here, but I wanted to show that to you as kind of a place to start in terms of knowing what to ask for sometimes. The next one that I'm gonna, sh that we're gonna go through is, we'll, and we'll go over this in just a minute as well, is this USBE Bite Size PD and Office Hour. So I'll go over that in just a second. So we'll, that one's not hyperlinked on purpose. The next one is the eMedia Hub. This is where the state is starting to house all of their resources and they do it by content. So there is a social studies bookshelf on their eMedia Hub and then that's broken down by grade level. Uh, depending on the grade level, some have a ton of resources in there. Some are a little bit more limited, but again, that's something that they're adding to it almost weekly. So, so look out for those changes as well. The next one, this one is super time intensive. So I know that this is set to go live on February 21st. On February 22nd, the window closes. So I do apologize if you are watching this after February 22nd, but the state is also offering a summer institute specific to content integration for fourth and fifth grade teachers. So that link is to the application. The application does take a little while to complete, but they're all questions that are, are kind of right there for you. Um, Okay, and then as a preview, things that are going to be coming up over the next few months. The first one is that there will be some book studies that will be offered to extend your own understanding of those social studies standards and the resources around best practices and social studies instruction. The core guides are in the process of being written right now. So those are set to go live pretty soon here, but the core guides are a great place to backwards design what you want these units of instruction to look like. Jordan School District is in the process of writing a K-6 curriculum for teachers to do this. We've gotten just a couple of snippets of what it looks like, and so far it's looking pretty good. Um, there is another optional curriculum that's on there. And then the last one is pretty exciting. This is the Build Your Own Background Knowledge Canvas course. So what this looks like is, for myself, I'm not from Utah. So when I moved to Utah as a teacher, one thing that I, I realized was that teaching fourth grade would be kind of a, a tough deal for me because I didn't have a lot of the background knowledge around Utah studies. Um, not growing up here, you don't know a lot of the things that are brought up in that Utah studies. And so I knew that that would be a struggle for me. This course is meant to build, to to backfill some of our own content knowledge gaps. So if you're looking at these social studies standards and you're going, you know, I'm not really sure I know what this means, that's going to be a course that you can do that's for you. And that will be self-paced. You go on there, you take what you want from it. Um, you don't have to complete it. They'll just have various modules that you can go through and work at your own pace. One question that I get quite a bit about the updated social studies standards is previous materials. We all have these units of study that we put together in order to support students in learning social studies with those previous standards from 2005. This document is there to help you identify what would still apply. So there are some units that you may have developed that might still be very applicable and appropriate for your grade level. So that crosswalk document that's hyperlinked is where you can go to identify whether or not that is still the case. 
If you want more, this, there's been a ton in here. Again, everything's hyperlinked. The slide deck should be available to you. Um, you know, So anything that you want, go ahead and click on it and take it, use it, give us feedback. But there are a couple other things that I just wanted to share with you over the next couple of minutes. The first one is this idea of unpacked skills, dispositions, and contents. And I have them for K5 on here. But these slide decks are really meant for you to kind of go through and see how each strand is unpacked and what are the skills and dispositions associated with that strand and then what content you could use in order to address that strand. Okay, so here's a kindergarten example. So in kindergarten geography, which is strand two, students will understand that history is the study of events, people and places of other times. So their skills and dispositions are listed on the left hand side, things like construct, explain, describe, use. And then your content would be things like a map and how a map represents a place. A globe is a model of the earth, geographical features unique to the community, and then relative locations, maps, and globe. So I think that that's helpful as we start setting up our classrooms where for next year, where we can go, okay, so I know I need to have a globe in my classroom if I'm a kindergarten teacher, because this is a main content um, standard that my students will have to be able to do. So that is what the that looks like for K2, three, four, five. You also have that slide deck available to you that's specific for you. So Utah's unique geography, skills and dispositions, sorry, and then the content. What content would we use in order to teach those skills and dispositions? All right, next one is at the beginning of this, we talked about content integration. So where are those integration opportunities and the examples? So I have first through fifth here, kindergarten teachers. I am going to work to see if I can find those. I know that it was created at some point, so I will reach out and see if we can find those and I can send that to you in a weekly email. So here's what those integration opportunities look like. This slide deck has any place with social studies as your kind of main focus, because that's who put together this document, what is the social studies standard, and then what other standards can support you in that. I want to point out that like on slide eight, for example, this slide is, or this standard is so specific, the team did not feel that they could identify a math, science, or ELA standard that supported that social studies standard. Okay, so here's one with social studies and seed. Here's one with the trifecta here. So again, you're going to see that depending on what the standard states, but at least that's a starting point for where you can see those opportunities for content integration. And again, those are available on here for, for grades first through fifth. And I will work on identifying where we can find those kindergarten ones or if they are still in a draft form. So before I talk to you about the USBE Bite Size PD, which is different than the Canyons U Bite Size PD, just to clarify. So these are monthly Zoom meetings. They are hosted by Joanna Sorensen, and sometimes she has other people that are on there to kind of support her in this. So they're Bite Size PD in office hours. They're held the second Thursday of each month from 3.45 to 4.30. The first 30 minutes is professional learning on the social studies standards and or social studies instructional strategies. The last 15 minutes is just kind of a Q&A. So ask questions, support each other, collaborate. So the first session was held in January. There was another one in February, but here is a slide deck to what that January presentation looked like. So she went through a couple of these pieces with, um, where to find stuff, um, where it's found under the portrait of a graduate. And I'm just going to kind of quickly go through here so you can just see what types of things there are. And again, everything, she likes to pack everything full of resources the way that I do. So here's another place that you could go to as well if, again, if you wanted more. So here is the menu of when those are coming up. The next one will be how, will be held on March 14th. So again, 345 is when you would jump onto that. And it's the effects of social studies instruction on elementary literacy. And Joanna has, I don't want to spoil any of her content, but Joanna's done some really interesting research on how social studies impacts in elementary literacy. So with that being a main focus of Canyon School District and for many of us elementary teachers, I think that that's going to be something that you will really enjoy learning more about. 
Okay. And sorry, just to clarify, these links bring you right to that Zoom. So you would want to kind of put a calendar invite in for yourself and then have that link in there and then go ahead and fire it up on March 14th. All right. So why all of this matters? So I have a quote from the standards themselves, and that social studies centers knowledge of human rights and local, national, and global responsibilities so that learners can work together to create a just world in which they want to live. And, and something that I would argue is that we really don't have a, a true society without good social studies instruction. It, unless we can engage civically, unless we can understand our history, unless we can understand what's going on in the world around us, um, our four strands again are the civics, economics, history, and geography. Without those four things, we're really going to struggle to develop any other one of those content areas. So these are a couple of things that I just kind of want to end with. So the first one is that Martin Luther King Jr. and Frank, they would be the same age as Barbara Walters if they were still alive today. All three of these very influential historical figures were born in the year 1929. And I remember the first time I was, you know, I doom scrolling on Facebook and I saw this, I was shocked because all three of these people seem to have existed in very different times. So um, one thing that I would challenge you to do is just within your classroom, have a place where you can put some type of timeline. And as you're talking about these different events, point out to students where these things have occurred with the world as a whole. Um, many of you know that I have a five-year-old. She's a kindergartner in Canyon School District. And one of her favorite things to ask is like, did that happen way back in the 80s? And it can be anything, right? Whether it's Abraham Lincoln, whether it's um, you know Willie Mammoth, whatever it was, in her mind that happened in the 80s. So um, let, let's correct that. Uh, so by having that timeline up, you can really help students center where they are, where they've been, and how they're existing in this world as a whole. The other one I know looks really silly. This is just kind of a fun fact building on that same idea. So George Washington passed away in 1799 and the first dinosaur fossil was discovered in 1824. So there's a really big chance that in that 25 year gap that the first president of the United States had no idea that dinosaurs ever existed. So again, just something kind of fun. Um, tell your family about it tonight at dinner. Um, but anyway, so I just kind of wanted to, to talk through how this truly matters for our students. So again, here I am. My email address is at the bottom. It's ashley.lennox at canyonsdistrict.org. I'm happy to talk more about any of these things, chat through any of it, um, you know, exchange fun memes. And then last, thank you for attending this week's Bite Size PD. I want to make sure that you have these links available to you as well. So you have your Canyons U page, the Bite Size PD page, and lastly, we have that relicensure credit. So if you attended today, please make sure that you click on that so that way you can get credit for attending today going towards relicensure. So happy February, everyone. That 24-25 school year seems like it is a long way away, and I promise you um, it's coming up faster than we think. That objects in me are closer than they appear is very true when it comes to our school years, but Last, I wanted to end with this. Thank you for everything that you do for our students and our communities as a whole. You are such an important stakeholder in, in what we do for our students and, and the business of creating good humans. So thank you. Take care of yourselves. And I hope to see you soon.